Good day, I hope you are well. Today, we're going to explore the hidden world of microorganisms. These are tiny living things that are invisible to the naked eye and can only be seen with a microscope. Despite their size, they have a huge impact on our lives and the environment. There is a wide variety of microorganisms, each with unique characteristics and functions. Today, we will explore the main types. These include viruses, bacteria, fungi, and protista. Some of these microorganisms photosynthesize, just like plants. For our video on photosynthesis, please check the link below. At the end of our video, we have some questions for you to try out. You can test yourself with these before we show you the answers. It's a fun way to see how well you understand the topic. Practicing with these questions not only helps you grasp the material better but also boosts your confidence and performance when facing tests and exams. Otherwise, let's hang out together and uncover the incredible world of microorganisms. Microorganisms are living organisms that are too small to see with the naked eye and which are only visible through a microscope. Many living organisms, such as plants and animals, are large enough to see with the naked eye. Microorganisms, however, are far too small for you to be able to see unless you use a special magnifying instrument such as a hand lens or a microscope. The word emicros means very small and organism refers to living things. These microorganisms occur almost everywhere but usually you are unaware of them as you cannot see them. It is only when they make you sick or have some other effect, such as making food decay, that you notice that they are there. The study of microorganisms is called microbiology. Before microscopes were invented in the mid to late 1600s, people had no idea that microorganisms existed. Some of these microorganisms may be harmful in terms of how they may affect us, but there are also many useful microorganisms and life without them would not be possible. They did not know that microorganisms caused grape juice to turn into wine, milk to turn into cheese, bread to rise, beer to ferment, some diseases, such as colds, the invention of the first microscope allowed biologists to observe objects and organisms that no one had ever seen before. There are many different kinds of microorganisms. They include bacteria, protists, fungi, and viruses. Viruses are generally considered to be non-living because they do not display all seven characteristics of living things. Hence, we sometimes refer to viruses as microparticles. Most microorganisms are unicellular, which means that they consist of a single cell. Some microorganisms are multicellular meaning that they are made up of many cells. Unicellular organisms generally require a microscope to be seen. A few unicellular organisms are visible to the naked eye. For example, the largest bacterium is just under 1 mm in diameter, which can be seen with the naked eye. In fact, the largest unicellular organism in the world is a species of algae called Vlonia ventricos that can reach up to 4 cm in diameter. Microorganisms are found in all biospheres, including in soil, water resources, the seabed and in rocks underneath the Earth's crust. Because they decompose substances, they are extremely important in the recycling of nutrients in ecosystems. Viruses are microscopic particles that attack the healthy cells of other living organisms. They are not placed in any of the five kingdoms of living organisms. This is because they have characteristics of both living and non-living things. Viruses cannot carry out the seven life processes on their own. These life processes include breathing, movement, growth, feel or stimuli, reproduction, feeding, and excretion. 
They do not break down food for energy nor do they have an organized cell structure. They have a non-cellular structure and there is no cell nucleus or cytoplasm, and thus they cannot be regarded as a cell. This means that they can only survive inside another organism, their host, and can only multiply after they have infected the host's cells. Outside of the host a virus is like a chemical compound and does not exhibit an any metabolic reactions. Some viruses are able to influence or infect many species, while other viruses can only infect single species. Viruses are found everywhere on Earth, and they are parasites that can only multiply inside a host. They are only able to reproduce by using materials from the host cell that they have infected. In the process of this type of reproduction, they destroy the host cell. Because of this, viruses can therefore not be regarded as living organisms. Viruses are also extremely small and can only be observed by means of an electron microscope. Diseases and illnesses are sometimes a result of viruses. In plants the tobacco mosaic virus causes lesions on tobacco plants. In animals and humans, poliomyelitis, HIV, mumps, measles, warts, flu, the common cold and conjunctivitis or pink eyes are caused by viruses. Viruses can take on various shapes, the most common shapes are as follows. Helical, polyhedral, spherical and complex. Bacteria are living things that are neither plant nor animal. They are unicellular and they belong to a group all by themselves. Bacteria are single cell organisms and have no true cell nucleus. All bacteria are unicellular although some of them live together in colonies that are multicellular. This group or kingdom is called the monera. Bacteria are some of the smallest organisms in the world and can only be seen under a microscope. They are found everywhere on Earth. Humans, animals, plants, soil, water and the atmosphere all contain bacteria. Many bacteria are useful, but some of them are harmful. Bacteria may be bad or good for us. For example, the bacteria in our mouth can cause cavities. We may get a bacterial infection in our body such as throat or ear infections. But there are also good bacteria. Good bacteria in our bodies help digest our food. Good bacteria are used in making some of the dairy products we like to eat such as yogurt and some types of medicines. Bacteria are also responsible for decomposition of dead organic matter and returning nutrients to the soil. Most bacteria can survive particularly adverse conditions such as drought, heat and cold, and are even resistant to toxins. There are many different types of bacteria. They are grouped and classified according to the shape of the bacterial cell. Rod-shaped bacteria are called bacilli. Round-shaped bacteria are called cocci. Spiral-shaped bacteria are called spirilli. Bacteria contain genetic material known as DNA. Some bacteria also have cilia and flagella for movement. However, many bacterial cells do not have a flagellum or cilia. Protists belong to the kingdom Protista. This group of organisms is separate from plants, animals, monera, and fungi. The organisms that are classified into this group are usually unicellular. Protists live in any environment that contains water. Organisms that occur in the protista kingdom include amoeba, red algae, green algae, seaweed, dinoflagellates, diatoms, and slime molds. Most protists are not disease-causing, but there is a group of protists known as pathogenic protists that are disease-causing. Protista can be single or multicellular organisms. Some protista obtain their nutrients and energy by consuming other organisms. 
Some protista obtain their energy from the sun and their nutrients from water, they photosynthesize. Protista can be harmful and may cause illnesses such as malaria and sleeping sickness. In some instances, protista come in handy as they can consume harmful bacteria. Protista are divided into three groups, plant-type protista, animal-type protista, and fungus-type protista. Plant-type protista have chlorophyll and produce their own food through photosynthesis, that means they are autotrophic. They have no specialized way of moving from one place to the other. They are sometimes referred to as algae. Some algae such as Chlamydominus are microscopically very small and unicellular and are approximately one millionth of a meter in diameter. Other forms of algae are multicellular and relatively large, such as giant sea bamboo that can grow to a length of 65 meters. Animal-type protista are also called protozoa. Unlike animals, all protozoa are unicellular organisms. They cannot produce their own food and depend on other organisms for food, that is they are heterotrophic. They have a special way of moving from one place to another, for example the amoeba. One group of protozoa have no way of moving on their own. Organisms in this group are parasites of people and animals and are spread by blood-sucking insects. The parasite, Plasmodium, that causes malaria is an example of a protozoan in this group and is spread by mosquitoes. The parasite, Trypanosoma, that causes sleeping sickness is spread by the tsetse fly. Fungus-type protista cannot produce their own food and absorb food from their environment, they are heterotrophic. They are similar to fungi due to the fact that they absorb their food from other organisms and rotting organic material. They are not classified as fungi because they differ in their composition from fungi. Examples include slime mold, water mildew and downy mildew. Fungi are living organisms that are related to both plants and animals but are also different from these groups. One big difference between plants and fungi is the substance which forms the cell walls of fungi, namely chitin. Fungi may be unicellular such as yeast, that is used for the baking of bread, or multicellular such as mushroom and toadstools. Fungi have the characteristics of plants, but do not contain chlorophyll. Fungi cannot photosynthesize. They choose to grow in dark, moist places. Fungi are everywhere, in the air, water, on walls, in gardens, on food and sometimes between people's toes. Some fungi are large, bright and colorful, while others are easily overlooked. Fungi obtain food through nutrients that they absorb from their environment. Most fungi grow on their food source by forming a spreading network of branching threads or filaments called hyphae. These filaments secrete enzymes that digest the food. The filaments then absorb the predigested food. Examples of fungi include bread mold, mushrooms, yeast and bracket fungi. Of the approximated 1.5 million species of fungi, only 300 may cause infections in humans. Some common fungal species include athlete's foot, ringworm and fungal nail infections. As we conclude, please try answering the following questions before the answers pop up. You can pause the video as you go. Let's meet next time as we zoom in on harmful microorganisms and how to control their spread. We will also learn about how scientists such as Louis Pasteur played an important role in identifying and developing cures for some diseases caused by harmful microorganisms. Be sure to check the link below for more details on this. I hope you enjoyed the class today as much as I did. It made me want to study more and become a scientist myself. Be sure to subscribe so that you do not miss our weekly uploads. 
Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day and keep well.